What's that? One, two, three, four, four seconds. If that's not an argument for preset, I don't know what is. One of the most asked questions that I get on a daily basis is how do I edit or what software do I use to edit and can I show some simple ways to edit and can we talk about editing? Sam, how did you edit that photo? What do you do? Let's have a look, shall we? Let's just jump into the laptop. Let's go into Lightroom and I'll run you through a really basic shot and just do it from start to finish and you guys can kind of see, I'll talk through what I'm doing. Nice, simple, easy video, but you can sit there, you can kind of see how I work through a, a video. Video? Photo. Hey Sam. Yeah? Have you subscribed? Of course I'm subscribed. They haven't subscribed. Well, they should subscribe. I know they should. Obviously. Subscribe. Good. Subscribe. What he said. Okay, right, let's throw a screen record on so you guys can see what I'm doing. Let's do this, new screen recording, record. Okay, on the screen, there's some shots that I took at sunset the other day. Looks quite cool. Um, and then I've also got some light stuff that we'll look at in a moment. So with this shot here, um, we'll just keep it as a no cropping. If you do want to crop for Instagram, it is a four by five crop that you need. And you go up here and you can click here and go to four by five. You can even change that. So if you don't want it as a square, you can press X and it'll change it into, uh, you know, lengthways, like, like that. I mean, I quite like that actually, so we'll just, we'll just leave it like that. Okay, um, on the left-hand side over here, I have my presets. I'm gonna edit this completely from start to finish, but let's just have a quick look at some of the presets. Now, let's go to 2015 Opti Oz, and we can go through them, and you can see even back then, you know, they do make them, look at this. So we'll go to V003, and if you just increase the exposure slightly, and the shadows and that and drop the highlights and bring back some of that there and a bit of that i mean it doesn't take long to get to a photo you may like i typically use at the moment uh deep blue um purely because i like the contrasty like vibe and feel in it that i've created um and sometimes it's a bit too blue so i just slide the white balance back towards the oranges the oranges the warmth I slide the white balances to a more warmer tone. Orange, you get what I mean. But we're not using that today. So let's go back and reset that. Go back here, bam, 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 bam. Um, because we're gonna be doing it going through here. But if you do wanna use the presets, um, yeah, link in the description. So what I would do here typically is bring back some of those shadows, not too much, and bring up some of those blacks, increase a little bit of contrast, drop the highlights slightly, and start working from there. Now there's a little bit of negative space up top, but for, for the pips of the video, it doesn't really matter. So it's a little bit hazy, so I'm gonna increase the dehaze just slightly, like so. And what it does typically do when you do that, it does typically make it a little bit cooler. So you can just bump up the, uh, the white balance there um, to make it a little bit more warmer. So what I'm going to do is I wanna bring out some more of the foreground. So I'm gonna get a brush tool I'm going to make sure it's all set to zero. If you want to double tap any of these, so for example, if the exposure is all the way up there and you double tap exposure, it'll bring it right back to resetting. So we'll go here and I'm just gonna lighten up some of the foreground. Not much, just like this. I know it looks messy, but that's because we're gonna do something now to fix that mess. I'm gonna bring up some of the clarity and bring back some of those warm tones and drop the highlights, a bit of the shadows and a bit of texture. Okay, go down to the bottom of the brush tool, you've got range mask. Click on range mask, go down to luminance and I'm going to slide this slider here like so. So I want it to be predominantly bringing out the details in the darker sections of the image so i'm going to slide it towards the darker sections if you want a, uh, a luminance mask to show you where you're at so you could do this and it'll show you what it's covering so all the red is where it's being applied to so now you can see it's kind of uh, just bringing out some of the details down here if we do this you can see what difference that's making now we can add a bit more contrast in there to make it a little bit more realistic and a bit more like that and a bit of that and it brings out some of the details, which looks quite cool. I mean, it looks a little bit, for me, a little bit too blue. I mean, it was blue hour, but we can just we can just do that and even bring up the tint a little bit to give it a bit more color. There we go. So let's do that. 
and we can come down to the tone curves. Now in tone curves, this is where a lot of the magic can happen, where you change a lot of the colors. You can come down here and change it in the hue, saturation and luminance, but I typically like to do tone curves first of all. So let's just give you a little bit of an example. We're gonna put a dot there, a dot there, and a dot there. Now let's explain this tone curve quickly. Bottom left is back blacks, top right is whites. So blacks, shadows, midtones, highlights, and whites. So obviously if I change the, uh, the shadows here, it's going to change the color in the shadows. So we don't want it too, too strong, but we can do kind of something a bit like this. Bring this up slightly, bring that up, bring this up. Don't worry, it's a process. And we'll do this, and then we'll come over here, and we'll drop that down. It's gonna get more contrasty, but you can, you, you just watch. And we'll do this, and this, bring that down slightly. Let's raise that slightly as well, not too much. We'll probably bring that down to about there, and we're gonna go to the blues. Bam, and a bam, and a bam. And we're gonna bring that down now bring that up, making a little bit of an S curve, like so. So if we just turn the tone curves on and off, that's what the tone curves have done. Now a bit too contrasty for my liking, so we can just remove some of that contrast up top, uh, but you're retaining the colors that you've just manipulated. So that's all been done in the tone curve itself here. So we've changed the red, green, and blue channels. I'm gonna change the point curve now, which is basically the overall look of the photo. So let's bring up the let's crush the blacks a little bit to give it that kind of faded look and we're going to bring down the the whites and i think we can bring down some of the highlights as well and the mid tones let's bring those down as well to give it that like dark vibey tone so if we do a little before and after you can see that on the screen left is before and the right is after it's looking quite good it's looking a little bit washed out because of the dehaziness but we can always bring that down depending on your your personal preference. I quite like it about there. And what I'm gonna do with the sun is I'm going to make the sun really extravagant because that's what I like to do. So exposure, up. Clarity, down. Texture, halfway down. And we're gonna bring the white balance slightly into a warmer tone. And we're gonna make the brush nice and big. And we're gonna just tap on it like that. And just like that, you've got a nice kind of like Sun flare, if we turn the brush tools on and off, you can you can see the difference in, in what the brush tools are doing to the image. So I think uh, as it stands, it's quite a nice image. Um, and again, we haven't touched any of the colors yet. Look, all the colors are exactly as they started because we only used the tone curve so far. So if you think that it's the blue you're not too happy with, you can even desaturate some of the blue. If you don't want too much blue, add some blue. Um, you can even make it a little bit vibey if you want to but i'm going to take it because i quite like darker blues so i'm going to bring down the luminance bring down the saturation and i'm going to push it up a little bit like that so we can just see the difference there and i'm going to go into the reds can you see there's a bit of a red tinge on the sun i don't really like that so let's just move that towards the oranges and we're going to bring that down slightly the yellows so the yellows, I wanna bring a little bit towards like the warmer tones of like oranges, bring up some of that saturation, make it a little bit darker. These are very subtle changes, but they're making the whole image come to life. Greens, so greens, there's a little bit of a green tinge across it, but not a lot. Most of the greens are up here. I can't, I don't know if you can see that changing on your screen, but you can see that the greens on this section of the image are changing when I slide this back and forth like this. So let's just drop that down, drop that down. That's good, I'm liking this. Little before and after, really nice. Now you can come down to color grading then if you want to add some extra color grading. And let's just do this, let's throw this up. This is the uh, mid-tones. So that's all the way at red and you can see that when I move that around, it's changing just the mid-tones. So let's make that nice and warm and I'm gonna reduce that amount to about there. And now let's go to the shadows, which are predominantly blue. So we'll bring that all the way out so we can see that 
So you see it's now changing like the darker sections, the shadows of the image. And I'm gonna bring that up to kind of like here in the tealy section and I'm gonna bring that all the way down and just try and find the right, that there is nice, I like that. And then highlights. Now highlights are obviously the whiter sections, the highlights of the image. And again, if we scroll that around, you can see it's only affecting the highlights. So again, I want it warm because that's where the highlights are. Bring that down. And I think that's looking quite cool. I'm gonna go back to the tone cube and I'm gonna bring that down because I don't want the, the black, I don't want it to be too washed out. And the shadows, I'm gonna drop slightly to bring in some of that contrast. And I'm gonna drop the contrast again up here, before and after. Now, the reason I use presets is because it speeds up this entire process and you don't have to spend so long doing the basics, like the tone curve um, and the uh, pretty much everything I've just done. Everything I've just done, apart from brushes, you can just go ahead and you can just throw a preset on and it's gonna do it for you. It gets you to that good starting point. That's the whole point of a preset. So using presets can help you speed up the, the process. I mean, this image, it's, it's not specifically one I like anyway, that's why I haven't posted it, but it's a good example to show you what you can do with tone curves. If we turn those tone curves on and off again, look, it's all in tone curves and it's pretty insane. And if you don't want it so contrasty, all you have to do to make sure it's less contrasty is see this bit here, the shadows, you just have to bring that up and do that to all of the ones that you've done that to. And then it'll be less contrasty um, and you can just add contrast up here. So it's it's totally up to you. I mean, this is where your creative flair is gonna come in, where you're gonna, you know, show off your style and, and you know, really bring out your, your style. Now, this is a bit of a longer video because people have asked for it. So let's go to a nighttime shot now. Um, let's just go to uh, this one here, which is one on a rooftop that I did the other day. We'll do the four by five crop and bam. Now, first things first, let's just look at the details that the Sony captures. So this is from a raw file. So this is the original and then that's, that's, that's what it's capturing. So it's pretty insane. Like other cameras are just as good. I'm just saying Sony's are pretty damn amazing. So again, with the presets, you can go ahead, you can throw any of these presets on, even B3 again, and increase the uh, exposure, and then change the white balance. And not gonna lie, there we go. That's three clicks. One, like, it, I'm not saying anything. Like, I'm not saying anything. Let's just reset that. How many clicks, right? Click the preset, click to increase exposure, and then click to change white balance. Three clicks. That's why people buy presets. I'm not, this, that's not why people don't buy it because of the colors. It's because it speeds up your goddamn process. Like, think about how long it would take me to get to that because look, let's just go into V3. So the, let's, the exposure was on zero because that's what it was. Highlights, shadows, this, you would have changed all of this. The tone curves, you would have changed all the tone curves that I'd already done once and then saved it and now I didn't have to do it again. You would have changed all of these. All of these you would have had to go through and change. All of these would have had to go and change. And the calibrations. So you're looking at like a 20 minute, 20 minute, 50 minute, 20 minute worth on a photo saved in, what's that? One, two, three, four, four seconds. Four seconds. If that's not an argument for presets, I don't know what is. Presets are down in the description, 114 for 10 pounds. Not even expensive, it's 10 quid, like $12. With this, I mean, I wanna, I wanna just not do it with a preset, but like, I, I can't, I can't speak highly enough about like how quick that is. I don't want to go and go through it all and how to get to that final image because preset. You can change the colors if you want to because you've got time now. So you're like, well, okay. Let's uh, let, let's let's see this see this yellow down here. I don't really like that. It's too saturated. Let's just get rid of it. Let's make it you know. Let's make it look more realistic. There we go. There's a bit of like a you know. I think I feel like there needs to be more, more like magenta in there. Let's drop some of that. Do a bit of that. Do some of that. Like I'm not just doing this to like promote my own presets, but like in general, you don't even have to buy mine. Go buy someone else's. Like I, I'm the only creative that's going to tell you to do that. It's just quicker. 
It's gonna speed up your life, speed up your edits, and give you more free time to go to shoot. Let's jump into the hashtag and see what you guys have been shooting over the last couple of days. And, uh, presets. Okay, so, throwing a screen record on. Uh, let's go down from the top one here. This is a nice silhouette shot. Oh, that's really nice. Nice sunset silhouette. Those birds as well, really like that. This one here, I like how you use stuff in the foreground to kind of present the subject walking through the frame. I like that a lot. This one here, nice set of motorbike stuff. I've never shot a motorbike. I mean, I've shot a motorbike in the street, but I've never shot specifically a bike. So if you own a bike and you'd like a photo shoot, let me know. Uh, this one here, wow, that is a vibe. That first shot, I really like. You've got the lights in the foreground, background, lights everywhere. Love the colors too. This one here, nice typical kind of like coastal town, coastal village vibes. I just know that in the summer they have like this regatta and everybody goes there and they all swim and do boat stuff and funny stuff. Like you just know that vibe happens. And it's just, I love that. I love that that photo gives that vibe. This one here, blue, but very, very vibey. I like that. And this one, nice street shot here. I probably would have tried to capture, let's say, so the, the Mercedes in the first image, I probably would have put the first one as the first shot. And then I probably would have tried to like, see the, the, the line that it's sitting on, this one down here. I would have gone to like just the left of it and like tried to get it so it was like symmetrical as it was going through the frame. I don't know if that makes sense, but my head it did. But this one here, that's a, that's a dog, it's a cute doggy. Look at the cute dog. And uh, this one here, which is uh, from HJM Visuals. I've noticed a lot of people like kind of like crushing those blues, like making them really dark, getting that really like edgy vibe. Um, it's kind of what Tomas does, who I've shot with before. But yeah, guys, these are all looking incredibly sick. Honestly, thank you all for using the hashtag. If you do want to get seen on this channel, that portrait's really cool. If you do want to get seen on this channel, use the hashtag Optical Wonder, and every time I upload, I go through it. It might only be a couple every time, but hopefully you get to see your work here on this channel. Um, there will be a meetup announcement coming very soon. I'm just waiting on a couple of other people to say yes, and th then I'll, I'll tell you. With all that being said, I hope today helped you a little bit and you learned a little bit about editing. Um, presets down in the description, 114, 10 pound. What's that? One two, three, four, four seconds. If that's not an argument for preset, I don't know what is. With all that being said, create more, stress less, and of course, I'll see you in the next one. If you're not already, hit the subscribe button, hit the notification bell so you get notified when, you, when I do upload.